Good day. Welcome to the Far Eastern University Public Intellectual Lecture Series. My name is Rita Cusho and I'm from the Political Science Department. Our topic for today is Feminist Ethics from Oppression to Empowerment, and we are very privileged to have with us the former Executive Director of the Philippine Social Science Council, a professorial lecturer at the College of Social Work and Development of the University of the Philippines, and also a Professor Emeritus at UP Diliman. Let's all welcome Dr. Amarilis Tig Tiglao Torres. Good day, ma'am. Good day, Rita. And thank you very much for accepting our invitation to be part of the Public Intellectual Lecture Series. It's my privilege to be here with you. Thank you, ma'am. So, ma'am, today, um, the topic is something that is very relevant. Uh, it's on feminist ethics. But since our uh, participants will be uh, students, secondary students here at FEU, I think we have to go to the basics first. So, may I, my first question will be something fundamental, which is what is ethics and what is feminism? Because these are the two um, topics that we put together in this discussion on feminist ethics. Yes, uh, we should really start with those because uh, they look like very big words, but uh, when you think about it, they are with us every day as we go through uh, uh, from breakfast to working to our studying uh, and so forth. Because ethics would be the set of uh, moral standards that you mm -hmm. say that uh, define what is right mm -hmm. or wrong. They are uh, the uh, principles that um, define how people should uh, live a good mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So for example, you just made a prayer. Mm -hmm. So in Christianity, there is a set of morals about mm -hmm. what is right, what is good, mm -hmm. what is wrong, what is evil. And there are also ethics in any other religion. So mm -hmm. Buddhism as a set of philosophy also would have one. Mm -hmm. Islam has its own ethics and uh, the Protestants also have their own ethics. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is not only the religious groups which have ethics, there are also standards set by institutions like your university mm -hmm. would have its own standards about how it expects its students to move around, mm -hmm. to behave in classrooms, mm -hmm. or how teachers should be in relation to their students, mm -hmm. and how the teacher should be in relation to the standards of the school. Mm -hmm. So that's what is ethics, it's learning how, or uh, defining how you should behave when you are with others. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I, I would say, if you're living on an island by yourself, mm -hmm. you probably don't need ethics, mm -hmm. except maybe in terms of how you will treat the animals mm -hmm. living on the island. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. yeah. And <coughs> how, w what about feminism? Uh, this is another big word, as you have said, and mm -hmm. there are actually many misconceptions when, when people talk about feminism. How would you explain feminism to our students? Uh, this is a little bit uh, more difficult probably mm -hmm. to explain, although as I said, it's feminism is something really that uh, we deal with mm -hmm. on a daily basis. In that, I mean that feminism talks about the relationships between genders, mm -hmm. particularly in the beginning, the relationships that we see between women and mm -hmm. men and how they uh, relate to one another. Mm -hmm. The feminist argument is that through many, many millennia, and mm -hmm. I'm just talking about centuries, a millennia, mm -hmm. men have been conditioned to be the dominant mm -hmm. of the two gen of the two. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about male and female, mm -hmm. they are the dominant, and mm -hmm. they think that they can uh, make women subservient and obedient to them. Mm -hmm. So feminism talks about this as the root of women's oppression mm -hmm. and subordination. Mm -hmm. The idea, the male ethic mm -hmm. that uh, men are more powerful mm -hmm. and more dominant and have mm -hmm. more privileges in society. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call the androcentric or patriarchal ethics or patriarchy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. men thinking that they are mm -hmm. privileged. Mm -hmm. So ma'am, uh, for us to be able to appreciate feminism, we have to talk about patriarchy, right? Okay. So what is the origin of patriarchy? Because we see feminism now as a response to, to patriarchy. So. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, what um, the historical roots in particular of patriarchy? The historic, socio-historical roots of mm -hmm. patriarchy are a little more difficult to uh, to really talk about mm -hmm. because if it's been there for millennia, mm -hmm. you have to start from Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. In fact, okay, mm -hmm. this is now one undercentric ethic that mm -hmm. comes out of Christianity mm -hmm. when uh, the notion that Adam leads Eve mm -hmm. comes out from St. Paul's teachings because he says, since God created Adam before Eve, mm -hmm. he is preeminent and it is Eve who should follow. Mm -hmm. He's the leader and Eve follows. No? Mm -hmm. That is the, the notion there. And some people say 
that is the basis for some Christian uh, dogma, you know, mm. that, uh, for instance, when you get married, are you married? Uh, single. Are you single? <laughs> yeah, when we marry, in the traditional rite, you say, mm -hmm. okay, the, fa the priest tells you, uh, so-and-so, Juan, do you mm -hmm. promise to love and uh, respect your wife? Uh, let's say, uh, Rita. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a Rita, do you promise to love and obey mm -hmm. Juan? You see, so obedience. to be obedient already. Uh -huh. It's already ingrained mm -hmm. there. So that is the uh, patriarchy. Mm -hmm. And it is translated in so many, many ways mm -hmm. into more complex uh, dimensions. So because of male privilege, mm -hmm. if you go back now to our country, mm -hmm. uh, until the feminist movement came into being, mm -hmm. the norm was that property mm -hmm. is titled in the name of the husband mm -hmm. okay? okay so if you wanted to buy property and you're married you will not be able to do that you would not have been able to do that unless your husband signed oh. that he is willing to have you mm -hmm. enter into this property relations mm -hmm. you could not even accept gifts according to the law huh? mm -hmm. in civil law the wife is uh, can be forbidden to accept gifts mm -hmm. if the husband says no mm -hmm. do not accept these gifts mm -hmm. so that's a uh, patriarchy mm -hmm in property mm -hmm. and then you can see it also in decision making because mm -hmm. the man is considered the leader mm -hmm. the one is the spokesperson in communities and you can see it even now mm -hmm. uh, the leaders mm -hmm. are supposed to be the men mm -hmm. because they're supposed to be the ones used to the public life mm -hmm. and the women are well mm -hmm. in the traditional uh, times really mm -hmm. they thought that women should be just for the home oh, all right. yeah so mm -hmm. patriarchy looks at male privilege mm -hmm. and in that uh, in unequal situation mm -hmm. the subordination mm -hmm. oppression and sometimes the uh, expressions of lots of violent actions I against see. women as justified mm -hmm. because they are men mm -hmm. that's patriarchy All right. okay ma'am so uh, so these are really big words right yes, and it rooted is. in history and you know mm -hmm. uh, now it's embedded in our society with uh, let's say misogyny and all that um, Ma'am, I would like to ask you to please um, explain to our students uh, the common manifestations of patriarchy that sometimes even us are not aware of. Because uh, I want them to realize that not because maybe many of them are still single, they're not married, maybe they're thinking, na, oh, it doesn't affect me. So can we go to those uh, manifestations of this male privilege that you have been saying? All right. Um, there was a feminist who said there are basically around three ways by which patriarchy mm -hmm. expresses the patriarchal ethic. Now mm -hmm. let's look at it as a set of standards, no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Patriarchy as the set of standards. Mm -hmm. One is that when uh, you talk about what is going on in the world, mm -hmm. many times the woman becomes invisible. invisible. So mm -hmm. the language is also very uh, relevant here where you say mm -hmm. he or they, meaning they men no, yes. are running the world mm -hmm. or the corporate world is made up of men dominantly mm -hmm. and all that so mm -hmm. those are expressions there mm -hmm. okay uh, if uh, I have a slide mm -hmm. on uh, something about uh, what how men how workers are portrayed mm -hmm. and you see the portrayals of workers are in terms of looking at men so mm -hmm. if pictures can say a thousand words you can yes. say it express uh -huh. it i have two pictures one is uh, uh, a soviet uh, poster so mm -hmm. early 20th century and it's about uh, saying that he who does not work neither shall he eat mm -hmm. so it's a picture of a man behind mm -hmm. a desk giving out food to someone who is obviously dressed as a laborer mm -hmm. and an intellectual because he is uh, wearing a suit, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably mm -hmm. a teacher, mm -hmm. will not be given food because mm -hmm. he does not work. So it's mm -hmm. hard labor, but they're all men. Mm -hmm. Another one is from a more recent uh, website on uh, work ethic. Mm -hmm. And their definition of work ethic is depicted as a man pushing mm -hmm. a big rock. Okay. So again, it's like saying only men work <laughs> and they work hard mm -hmm. i also uh, have uh, something that i picked up from a website mm -hmm. again from uh, uh, a website that says the factors that demonstrate a strong work ethic mm -hmm. okay what does it say so this is the strong work ethic mm -hmm. professionalism is something observed from the moment employee walks in the office door to when he leaves he, leaves. he is mm -hmm. professionally dressed 
mm-hmm. with clean press clothes. He arrives a few minutes early mm-hmm. to settle in and get his coffee mm-hmm. so that he will be ready to start his shift on time. Mm-hmm. He scorches to other employees and doesn't take random breaks mm-hmm. or change lunch schedules without mm-hmm. authorization. He understands his job and is prepared mm-hmm. to do it. So work ethics mm-hmm. set the tone to develop the habits needed to be professional. Mm-hmm. So it's all talking about he. Mm-hmm. And yet we know that in offices, there are many, many women. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't mm-hmm. even say he or they. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's the invisibility of the women. The invisibility no? of women. In the, what, in the, in actually, the notion. Actually, we call that the gender bias language, right? Is it, it is a gender bias. Uh-huh. It is uh, sexist to the extent sexist, that yes. it renders uh, women trivial or not there. Mm-hmm. Because the notion is that mm-hmm. the woman is within the house, so she's not at work. Mm-hmm. So it's like saying that the work that women do at home, if it's really, let's mm-hmm. say, the wife mm-hmm. who's doing the work, is worthless. Mm-hmm. And yet, uh, we all came from families. Mm-hmm. And if it was your own mother who looked after you or a paid woman, Mm -hmm. we know that we would not have grown to be what we are Mm -hmm. or even probably survived Mm -hmm. if there had not been a woman Mm -hmm. who had taken care of us, fed us, Mm -hmm. looked after our health needs, you Mm -hmm. know, brought us to school, in some cases probably gave you some tutoring lessons. Mm -hmm. So these so-called unpaid work of women, Mm -hmm. in fact, are very valuable. So that's the other patriarchal uh, ramification in Mm -hmm. uh, even in looking at what we call the national accounts. Mm -hmm. That when you look at the value of work, it is Mm -hmm. only men's work that is often given Mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. So that is the second expression Mm -hmm. where women's work is trivialized. Trivialized. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. So uh, because of this, what happens is that when you look at the the GDP, or when you look at uh, labor force participation, you see that many more men are at work mm-hmm. than women. Okay, and you ask the women in some uh, surveys, they have asked the women, "Why don't you enter the labor force?" Mm-hmm. And for married women, they say it's because I have children to look yes. after mm-hmm. and so forth. So ordinarily, there are impediments to women's going to work mm-hmm. because of uh, you know childcare. Mm-hmm. Now. In this digital age, some people say that because she can now do work from mm-hmm. home yes. in digital mm-hmm. offices, this is good for women. Mm-hmm. Okay, so women can work and take care. Mm-hmm. So it is a double-edged situation mm-hmm. because it's true now because you can have a uh, tele uh, work or you it's know online work, online work yes. mm-hmm. you can stay home and look after your baby, mm-hmm. but it can have a backlash Mm -hmm. because this means that the man says, okay, you just do that. Mm -hmm. Stay home and take care of the baby. Rather than say, okay, I can also work at home. Mm -hmm. You go out to work and I can stay at home. Mm -hmm. That can also be um, the husband's reaction, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, it may not be that way Mm -hmm. because what can happen is that the woman will be forced to really, really just stay home Mm -hmm. because her work is at home. Mm -hmm. Paid work and Mm -hmm. baby work. (laughs) <laughs> so while it yes. gives her economic empowerment, mm-hmm. it does not change the notion that the woman has to sit at mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, that brings me to my next question, which is about the, the multiple burden that okay. women experience. Because uh, on one hand, we're saying that a women's work is either invisible or trivialized and undervalued, right? But at the same time, if women contribute, let's say, to the labor participation rate, what happens now is that she experiences this multiple burden of having to work inside the home and then having to work outside and earn uh, the family's keep. So can you please elaborate on this, ma'am, on this multiple burden? Okay, the multiple burden talks about, uh, well, first, um, in uh, women's studies, we talk Mm -hmm. about uh, work outside as productive work or paid work, Mm -hmm. and we talk about work which is unpaid but vital to the mm-hmm. uh, the human race would mm-hmm. be reproductive work like caring, washing, mm-hmm. laundry, upkeep of the house, etc. Mm-hmm. So paid work would be work as occupational, uh, you know, uh, employees mm-hmm. or farmers or fisher folk mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, this situation that we are talking about, that the woman uh, wants to work mm-hmm. and maybe settles for home-based work mm-hmm. and take care of the baby, that by itself is a multiple burden. Mm -hmm. Meaning to say, she is working in two realms, the productive sphere Mm -hmm. and the reproductive sphere. Mm -hmm. Her husband, 
I don't know, maybe the modern husband mm-hmm. would be doing the same. Mm-hmm. But in most cases, two-thirds of all the reproductive work around the world and mm-hmm. in the Philippines are done by women. Mm-hmm. Which means if two-thirds is done by women mm-hmm. and about uh, also uh, a fourth of them are in the labor force, mm-hmm. then it means that a lot of the women are doing both mm-hmm. productive work and mm-hmm. reproductive work. Mm-hmm. So this photo I have of a woman is doing multiple work okay mm-hmm. she is working on the computer she is washing she is cleaning she is thinking you know mm-hmm. so it's a burden yeah in fact this is one problem that uh, some uh, socioeconomic uh, programs have mm-hmm. for women mm-hmm. And which I always try to say to trainees that uh, are working in this field of mm-hmm. microfinance. Yes, you're giving the women money to work, mm-hmm. but are you considering how much time that will take from her reproductive work? Mm-hmm. So if she has to take care of uh, these uh, ducks mm-hmm. and feed them, okay, mm-hmm. while she's doing that, is there a system so that the caring for the young children mm-hmm. or the caring for the old parents is mm-hmm. being done by somebody else. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, it's more difficult to look after docs for your balut making mm-hmm. and to care for your children and to look after your ailing parents. Mm-hmm. That's the multiple burden. Mm-hmm. So the situation should be that if it's real uh, a partnership between mm-hmm. husband and wife, they should to take care of both these mm-hmm. sit- mm-hmm. settings. Mm-hmm. And, and most likely, the one providing help to the woman is another woman. It could be another woman, <laughs> right. yes. As we okay. know, our housemaids are usually women. Yes, yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Now, ma'am, you've mentioned that this is the reality in many parts of the world, including the Philippines. But based on the recent gender index or gender gap index. Gender uh, gap, yeah. Yeah, the Philippines is actually faring well in comparison We're to number our eight. Southeast Asian counterparts, right? So, so why is that? So it, are you saying now that it is much worse in in other countries uh, where we have probably violence against women more rampant than it, than it is in the Philippines? Uh, well, the Global Gender Gap Index mm-hmm. is based on four measures. Mm-hmm. Uh, health, mm-hmm. economic empowerment, okay. political empowerment, and uh, let me see, I have forgotten. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with violence. It doesn't pay. And All it right. looks at gap. You know, how much a country has to make up in order to reach equality. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately for us, Mm -hmm. uh, we are rated well on uh, health. Oh, the other one is education. Health, education, education, economy, and politics. Politics, We are rated well on uh, education. Mm -hmm. We are very good on health, although Mm -hmm. I think a little gap. Mm-hmm. Our economic performance has increased very well, meaning there are many more equal mm-hmm. paying jobs for men and women mm-hmm. than in other countries. Mm-hmm. Okay, In fact, uh, if you look at the labor statistics, many women are in wholesale and retail trades. Mm-hmm. The second occupation many women are in is as managers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is not true in other countries, even yes. in the West. Mm-hmm. They could be in retail trade, they could be in clerical services, but mm-hmm. not in management. Mm-hmm. So women, Philippine women are a bit better off than even the Western women. Mm-hmm. And as like you said, in Asia, we are the only Asian country in the top 10. Ah, the okay. others are Scandinavian countries. Mm-hmm. And in this part of the world, we share the top 10 spot with New Zealand, who is number mm-hmm. nine, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, mm-hmm. But those are the measures, help, mm-hmm. economy, education. education. And in terms of politics, we are not rated very well but mm. still better than some others. Yes, because we have many uh, women politicians, yes, right? Yes, we have, yeah. Mm-hmm. Half of, well, in the 16th Senate, half were women. Yes. And mm-hmm. then about uh, 42 in the Congress, I mm-hmm. think, including party list. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you have uh, about 33 or so uh, mayors mm-hmm. and a few vice mayors. Mm-hmm. So when the UN women said that the critical mass, Mm -hmm. when you say critical mass for political participation is that the least number of, uh, least proportion Mm -hmm. of women that you need in order to Mm -hmm. make a difference in politics, they said 33%. Mm -hmm. So we have surpassed those. And we share the glory with Rwanda. I really? (laughs) (laughs) People are always amazed. Rwanda? (laughs) But it's high in the gender, global uh, gap global uh-huh. yeah, gender global gap uh, uh-huh. index yeah well that's good news because after the genocide in rwanda no that's a piece of good news coming from from yes. that part of the world yes, right? but some of my friends say 
That's why they have equality. The men have died in the war. <laughs> uh-huh. oh, that's why. <laughs> well, I yeah. don't really know. But yeah. it's a fact. Uh-huh. And uh, when I read their website, they have deliberate efforts really to have representation. Ah. Yeah. So but the United States is not among the top 10. Really? Neither is Canada. So it's really, you know, it's that's Norway, really a piece of yeah. good news for yeah. us, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so that's that's really good news when you think about it, no? when you look at the gender gap index. But even then, ma'am, we know that uh, women in the Philippines don't seem to feel that you know, that we actually feel that we are better off than our counterparts, right? Because of the preve- prevalent misogynistic uh, culture that we seem to have at present. So now I'm leading you to this uh, very, very important topic, which is on the multiple oppression that women experience. Because the title of our session for today is From Oppression to Empowerment. And I think before we understand feminist ethics, it's important that we see uh, this very critical component of oppression, ex- exploitation vis-a-vis the need to empower women and how, why should we consider women empowerment as integral to national development. So ma'am, can you elaborate please on, on that, on that movement from oppression to empowerment? Okay, now as I said, uh, feminist ethics as defined mm-hmm. is really a set of, uh, a way of looking at the world where you say, that you have to overturn male dominance. Okay. And that is because they have been the sources of oppression and mm-hmm. subordination. Mm-hmm. So all the multiple oppressions you're talking about uh, would be something like this. So you are, let's say, a woman who is in a rural area. Mm-hmm. You come from a farming family. Mm-hmm. Um, you have enough money in your family for basic education, mm-hmm. but not for collegiate education mm-hmm. for example the school is far away from your uh, town your mm-hmm. barangay because you have to take three rides to get to the town mm-hmm. okay so this woman or this girl let's call her uh, Linda mm-hmm. okay is a girl mm-hmm. she's the oldest her siblings are males mm-hmm. okay so she wants to go to school mm-hmm. okay but uh, her opportunities to go to school mm-hmm. if it is going to to a school outside of the town, maybe affected Mm -hmm. by her father's notion that no, Mm -hmm. you cannot travel that far Mm -hmm. because you are a woman. Mm -hmm. So that's so. Gender is there, but because of difficulties of uh, location. Mm -hmm. So you are here Mm -hmm. in a rural area, then you may not have a good education. Mm -hmm. So there's the gender there, there is the location, Mm -hmm. and then there's the class because in Mm -hmm. her social class, maybe her father cannot afford to send her to school. Mm-hmm. Now, I, we know now we have free universal uh, mm-hmm. uh, education for tertiary education, but mm-hmm. still you need to take the tests. Yes. You probably have to pay for the tests mm-hmm. and you have very little at home to spare for except for your daily needs. Then mm-hmm. again, this could be a source of oppression or mm-hmm. discrimination. You cannot mm-hmm. because you cannot travel to the testing place. Yes. You cannot travel to the school. Okay, mm-hmm. so gender, class, location. Mm -hmm. And then it could be because uh, you are a girl Mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be obedient to your elders. The parents will say, no, you will first, you cannot work outside of this area first. Mm -hmm. Your work is to help your mother because there are five other siblings and Mm -hmm. we have two ailing uh, grandparents Mm -hmm. you have to take care. Mm -hmm. So there's the issue of generation. Mm -hmm. Younger generation being obedient to older Older generation. generation. That's one. Now Mm -hmm. you can take it from the other side, no? Mm -hmm. There is this older woman Mm -hmm. who is a widow, Mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the children are already out of the house. Mm -hmm. Her income is uh, very little because her husband's uh, SSS premium is Mm -hmm. only 3,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So she has no support, Mm -hmm. okay? So her oppression could be something like uh, she is not well educated. She mm-hmm. cannot find a job mm-hmm. because her qualification is only up to high school. Mm-hmm. So her job is li- her work uh, opportunities are limited. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, that's again a class. Her mm-hmm. generation is the opposite. Mm-hmm. She's elderly. Nobody wants to employ a fifty-year-old woman mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. So it's a generation. Mm-hmm. Then maybe she could be uh, an ethnic person. No, she could yes. be a tagbanwa. Yes. So who wants to? Who would? What kind of work would the tagbanwa be mm-hmm. able to do? So there's class. Mm-hmm. Okay. And by the way, 
only 10% of the ethnic groups get to school. Yes, That's the information, uh -huh. 10 to mm -hmm. 12%. So there are already limitations, and mm -hmm. those are what we call the inter intersectionality of mm -hmm. women's oppression. Okay. It's not only because of your gender, mm -hmm. it could be because of your age, mm -hmm. your location, you know, mm -hmm. your generation, mm -hmm. okay? Your mm -hmm. political affiliation mm -hmm. could be something that uh, will uh, be biased against you mm -hmm. and your religion. Mm -hmm. So we know that, uh, let's mm -hmm. say, these issues between Muslims and Christians is yes. a religious issue. Mm -hmm. They have repercussions to gender and mm -hmm. gender oppression. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, uh, I used to be with PSSC yes, and our office is right along Commonwealth mm -hmm. Avenue. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, we had a uh, tenant, well, we have offices for mm -hmm. rent. So she was from UN Women. So mm -hmm. she did an experiment on her own. Mm -hmm. She wore a hijab. Do you mm -hmm. call that? Yeah. Yes. Getting out of the office, she wore one. And then she was trying to hail a taxi. Mm -hmm. Several passed, no taxi stopped. Mm -hmm. She took it off. Mm -hmm. The next one took her. Oh. So you see, <laughs> an identity, yes. a uh -huh. religious identity. Uh -huh could be a source of oppression. I see. Not because she's a woman, because she is. Mm -hmm. that, but for her person, mm -hmm. those are the multiple oppressions that she has. Yes. Uh -huh. Now so you can also you have a woman who has been victimized sexually. Mm -hmm. That's another oppression, you know? Yes. It's a gender-based violence that she carries mm -hmm. around with her body. Mm -hmm. So you're saying now that beyond one's gender, a Christian woman in the Philippines will be in a more advantageous position could than be. a Muslim yes. a Muslim woman yeah. in a d predominantly Christian country. Yes. Right? And the woman is also less privileged than the Christian man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Definitely. So oh, yeah. so there are like multiple, multiple layers, yes. right? Like in the U.S., they say, uh -huh. you know, Bell Hooks, a uh, very yeah. famous black feminist, yes, says, yes. Mm -hmm. why would I want to be liberated, mm -hmm. you know, from my for my color mm -hmm. because why what's the advantage a black woman still earns less and has less privileges than the white woman uh -huh. and the black man has less privileges than the white man mm -hmm. so now mm -hmm. we can see that in the trump uh, administration yes. this uh -huh. is becoming very mm -hmm. uh uh you know it's coming out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that these feelings are there mm -hmm. in the same way for example that let's say i'm i have a kasambahay at home definitely even if we're both you know tagalog and then that means that I'm more privileged because of my class and, and my education, for example. So that is the multiple uh, layers no, of, of oppression. So now, Mom, I think there are real efforts no, that the women's movement have achieved in the last probably 50 years, since the 1960s, uh, that brought us to those, uh, let's say, to the creation of laws that are supposedly gender sensitive, like the anti anti vowsy you know and the uh, now we have this anti bastos uh, <laughs> law no of course in the in the 1990s i remember bawal bastos. bastos no and then of course we have the the uh, the anti sexual harassment from way back which i think is being amended now in congress um, what do you think um, are the long term effects of the existence of these laws in relation to this culture that we seem to have at present which is you know very gender insensitive First, I'd like to probably go back to history. Yes. Mm -hmm. Although we're talking about contemporary times yes. and these mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. even before this period, uh, Rita, mm -hmm. there have been feminists in the Philippines. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the history, uh, the famous feminist, uh, what, I forgot her first name, Katz, C-A-T-T-S, mm -hmm. came to the Philippines around 1912 mm -hmm. to try to organize women because that was the time, the heyday of mm -hmm. the suffragettes in yes. England mm -hmm. and in... Uh, uh, the U.S. So they were, we were already under the U.S. then, and they were trying to encourage the women to also go out and try to get the mm -hmm. vote. And the women, of course, coming out of Spanish Philippines, you mm -hmm. know, they were prayerful. Mm -hmm. They were dressed if they were uh, middle Maria class Clara. or upper <laughs> class. If mm -hmm. they were peasants, they were working in the mm -hmm. fields. Voting and elections were out of their, you know, mm -hmm. mindset. So they said, what? We're mm -hmm. not interested in that. Mm -hmm. But what were the women doing? Because because of the American period, more women had become educated, mm -hmm. had become lawyers, doctors, and all that. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? They were putting up facilities that women really needed. Mm -hmm. So I told you I was helping Gota de Leche. Mm -hmm. This is one of the oldest NGOs mm -hmm. in the Philippines put up by women. Mm -hmm. It was put up by the educated women because they saw 
that the poorer women needed milk mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for their babies because they were mm -hmm. malnourished and they had uh, no means to uh, buy. So these, they were collecting milk donations. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when the Gota de Leche was, uh, by law, mm -hmm. entitled to get some money from the Philippine mm -hmm. charity sweepstakes to mm -hmm. do its work mm -hmm. until the Marcos era when that was removed. Mm -hmm. So now we are living on donations and philanthropic mm -hmm. work. So. Mm -hmm. Those were the work of the early women. Mm -hmm. They put up periculture centers by law. Okay. And then when uh, they were elected into the uh, Commonwealth and mm -hmm. the, uh, later on the, the, uh, pers under the presidential system, some became senators or mm -hmm. congresswomen, they put up other laws for women like mm -hmm. uh, maternity leave. I see. Also was mm -hmm. uh, framed by, I'm not sure now which, uh, it could have been Pexon or one of the early women. Mm -hmm. no? And they were also really looking at what women needed. They didn't have the feminist mm -hmm. uh, ethic that we are talking about, mm -hmm. but as women, mm -hmm. they knew what women needed. Mm -hmm. And that is part of what feminism talks about, mm -hmm. to be able to understand society and mm -hmm. politics and culture as a woman and not as a man. Mm -hmm. not, uh, because that is the patriarchy, mm -hmm. to look at science, culture, and philosophy from the eyes of men. Yes, okay. Because women have their own experience mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. And to think about it, recipes are pieces of art. Mm -hmm. Cooking, you know, yes. is, <laughs> is art. Our you know? lawless recipe. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. So there are things that are really, oh, the, the mats that we, women mm -hmm. weave, mm -hmm. the fabrics that they weave, mm -hmm. you know, these are all arts. Yes. And in fact, they're called a part of the non-tangible culture mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, that is, feminism has been there, although it's mm -hmm. not been called that. Uh, so it has not in been 1932, as such. yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. in 1932 we won the right to vote, the vote. Mm -hmm. or 32, 36, 37 mm -hmm. that period, mm -hmm. and that's written by Encarnacion Alzona, one mm -hmm. of the early historians. Mm -hmm. But my father-in-law, who was already alive at the time, mm -hmm. he was a young man. He said, he said, do you know that the women didn't want to go out and vote? Mm -hmm. It was the men. Mm -hmm. who told us, no, you should. You mm -hmm. should go out to vote mm -hmm. and sign the plebiscite and say yes. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so, you know, so there's encouragement there was no, the Yeah, <laughs> the, the more liberal men were, you know, mm -hmm. encouraged the women. The women were really still really domesticated. Yes. Uh -huh. But now to go back to these laws that uh -huh. you say, from the 60s, we had uh, well, laws on women and minors, labor mm -hmm. laws, yes. and all that. Uh -huh. But the more significant one for us now, mm -hmm. maybe those, maybe we call them post-feminist, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. or after the uh, uh, 1976 when you had the Decade for Women. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the Decade for Women happened because all the scholarship that the women writers had been doing, including the scholarship of women in the humanities, whose mm -hmm. poems, whose uh, uh, novels and short mm -hmm. stories mm -hmm. were talking about women's situation. Mm -hmm. This is uh, slowly getting to the public mm -hmm. mind and showing there is another way to look at the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Because look at it, Rita, in the old society, you would never have been able to get an anti-rape law passed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because for the men, you know, especially marital rape. Yes. For mm -hmm. the men that, you know, you're married to me, I can have you whenever I want. Mm -hmm. That could be the, the mm -hmm. notion. And in the past, violence against women was considered a private crime. Mm -hmm. It's something done in the home and you cannot touch that. Mm -hmm. But because of the feminist notion that you know, you have to open up all the forms of oppression mm -hmm. and find ways to alleviate them, mm -hmm. we were able to get this laws passed. I see. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but it took time, huh? Like yes. the anti-rape law probably took three congresses. Uh -huh. This uh, one bill is still uh, mm -hmm. pending, the mm -hmm. anti sexual discrimination yes, bill uh -huh. is still pending. Yes. I think it's been there 17 years. Uh -huh. Yeah, the reproductive health law. 15 years, took I think. Years. So yeah, yes. it's a long struggle uh -huh. to get people to change their mind about what women deserve mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, so it's still an ongoing struggle. It right? is, yeah. We're yes. going to have the mm -hmm. review of Beijing plus 25, mm -hmm. 25 years after Beijing. Mm -hmm. And the Commission of the Status Woman says, we need to step up mm -hmm. in order to eliminate mm -hmm. uh, oppression and attain gender mm -hmm. equality mm -hmm. by the year 2030.